Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Faye Fitness. Today we are going to continue on with our women's self-defense series and we're going to talk about how to attack a person's neck and collarbone area. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy learning about, stay tuned and I'll show you how. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. Um, as you can see, we are going to continue on with our women's self-defense series. Ed has been kind enough to continue to be our test dummy. And this week, we're going to focus on the neck and collarbone area. So this is if someone's attacking you, how to attack this part of their body. Say, maybe they have a mask on or a helmet or they're just really tall and you don't think your hands can get up to the face to all those sensitive areas we talked about last time. The neck and collarbone are very sensitive, oftentimes exposed areas that you can go for to really keep yourself safe and dissuade an attacker. Um, and the reason you would dissuade him or her is because the neck and collarbones have a lot of pressure points in them that are going to stun and hurt like heck. So most people, if you hit them in these areas, will stop moving and take a step back. So these are great things to know. Um, we're going to be talking about a couple different hand positions today. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is a knife hand. And so that's really simple. You're just keeping your hand nice and straight like a knife. So your goal is to hit someone on this exterior of the hand. Let me get up here closer so you can see. So if your hand is nice and straight like a knife, you're going to hit them with this edge. And generally it's a chopping motion. So if you've ever chopped carrots or any other like a watermelon and you make that nice chop or hack movement that's what you're wanting to do some people will curve it a little bit that's fine too the main thing is you just want to make contact with the side of your hand next what we're going to talk about is called a hammer punch or a hammer hit and that's you just make a fist and bring it down so you want to hit again with the side of your hand here but just like you would strike a hammer onto a surface, you wanna strike your hand on it. So really easy peasy. Um, and then the rest, like fist, the little knuckle uh, thing we learned last time, those are all the same. So let's go ahead and start with the throat. You have two main areas to work with when you're dealing with someone's throat. You have the sides and the front. So let's go ahead and talk about the sides just because in most um, self-defense situations, that's the easiest to get to, um, especially for like large sweeping motions. So for the sides of the neck, we actually have what's called carotid arteries that run down the side of, of both sides of our neck. And if you hit those hard enough, you can actually stop the blood flow and stun your opponent. And it's gonna hurt like nobody's business. So for this one, you can use a knife hand, that's what I would recommend. If Ed is coming at me, I use my knife hand and come over and just make contact with the right side of his, or what's facing me, the right side. If you're a lefty, chop from the opposite side. Again, if, the, if you practice this a few times and the knife hand just doesn't feel that intuitive to you, try with a hammer fist angled sideways instead of straight down with a hook, this would be our number four hook if you watched my kickboxing series. Just a regular fist, maybe you wanna do like a modified um, cross or a number two from our kickboxing series. Just really anything to get your hand, like some surface of your hand, hitting the sides of the throat. That's again going to hurt like nobody's business and stop that blood flow. Um, if the person is close enough, you can also get your elbows in there um, I do have a basic elbows video on kickboxing in one of my earlier videos if you wanted to check that out. So really any kind of elbow motion, again, getting into the side of the throat is going to have the same effect as your hand. It just depends on how close you are to your attacker when that's happening. So moving on to the front of the throat, we have the exact same options. We have our knife hand, just a regular punch. We could do a hammer fist to the side this time as opposed to straight down or at an angle. Um, but you also have the opportunity to grab. And this is something that you may not feel comfortable with, but at the same time, if an attacker is coming at you, you really need to keep your safety in a pro 
uh, top priority. So what you do is just grab and you can either squeeze or grab and pull. Either one is going to hurt and you have the possibility of collapsing the windpipe. So it's gonna freak your attacker out, or at least it should. Um, so let me get up here so you can at least see my throat. Can you see how I kind of have this nice windpipe that protrudes? You wanna grab that and squeeze. And again, it's gonna really suck. Or grab and pull. Um, so, sorry Ed doesn't have a lifelike windpipe. Um, you can also aim for the Adam's apple if it's a male attacking you. They'll generally be in this kind of mid-throat area. That's really sensitive for hitting, grabbing, scratching, jabbing, what have you. Um, but again, because you're messing with the windpipe, this is a really sensitive area. There's nerves here. Um, it's going to do a lot of damage and stop that person, potentially stop that person. So next, moving on to the collarbone, we still have the same hits that we can use, and we're actually targeting the bone itself. And that's because even though it's a bone, the collarbone is actually very easy to break. Um, if you've done any kind of sports or gymnastics in your youth and broken your collarbone, you know just how easy to break it is and how painful it is. Um, sometimes if you break a collarbone, you can actually lose the mobility of one of your arms. So whichever side of the, your body you broke the collarbone, that arm may not function as well. And that's what we're going for here. We wanna break the collarbone, it's gonna hurt like heck, and reduce the mobility of the attached limb. We have a couple options here when we're talking about the collarbones. The first um, two options you have are not going to break the bone, they're just gonna hurt because they're actually activating a pressure point. And the pressure point is going to actually be behind the collarbone. So if you look at your own collarbone area, it's gonna be behind this bone, right about here, about midway into the bone. So a little bit off to the side of either side of the neck. And what you wanna do is, if you're close enough, jab your fingers, if you have fingernails, if you're a woman, this is gonna hurt even more, back behind the collarbone and into that pressure point. So it really, really hurts. It's not going to break anything, it's just going to hurt. And so on me, if you can see my collarbone, you would jab it right here. And just as hard as you can, just push down. The other thing you can do is if you were following my tips and had your, if I can get them, car keys in your hand, the other thing you can do is a stabbing motion towards that area. Again, we're trying to hit that pressure point either front on or down at an angle. So just down to where the keys are getting back behind that or straight across and they're hitting it dead on. You can do this to either side. I'm right-handed so I tend to always use my right hand and hit towards the right side of the body. If you are a lefty or what we call in the kickboxing world a southpaw, you could do the same set of moves and accomplish the same thing. The next set of movements are actually going to break the collarbone. And so, like I said earlier, the collarbone is quite easy to break, so you don't have to put a lot of force. Um, if you're in the heat of the moment, I would always apply much more force than you think you actually need, just to be on the safe side. So we can either do a knife hand in a downward motion, or a hammer fist, in a downward motion, or even a straight across punch, or depending on your angle, a hammer fist out to the side, or even a cross, like a true cross, like in my kickboxing video. Um, you could even do your elbows. I really wouldn't recommend that because if you do it wrong, it's gonna hurt you too. However, if you're in a very close proximity and you don't think you'll have enough maneuverability to do a hammer fist, um, a knife hand or a punch, go for it, give it a whirl. Either way, it's still gonna hurt your attacker. Um, so those are just some basic hits that you can do that to either injure that pressure point behind the collarbone or just break that bone completely. And that is all for today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. I really appreciate everyone who watches these videos and engages with me in the comments. It's been a really wonderful experience and I'm so glad that people are getting a benefit from this. So please tune back next week where we talk about the torso. So we're still moving down the body. We covered the neck and collarbone today. Next week, we're gonna talk about the abdominal cavity 
and pressure points and sensitive areas to hit there to dissuade an attacker. So until next week, bye guys!